In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the percent abundance of individual isotopes from the average atomic mass. Before you dive into this video too much, uh, it's very important that you already know how to calculate the average atomic mass from the percent abundances. That was talked about in a previous video where I showed equations and relevant information. If you haven't looked at that yet, take a look at that first and then come back here. We'll start with a quick list of learning objectives. Uh, the first order of business is to recall how we were able to calculate weighted average atomic masses from our previous video. So we'll go over that very quickly with the equation. And then secondly, we'll talk about how to do the reverse calculation, how to start with the average atomic mass and then be able to calculate the percent abundances of the individual isotopes. Uh, while the concepts are very similar, the mathematics in this particular calculation are a little bit more complicated. Uh, so we'll go through those step by step. If you recall from our previous video, this is the equation that we use to calculate the average atomic mass or average atomic weight of uh, any element. Uh, this is the number that shows up on your periodic table. Uh, if you recall, the small m's represented the atomic masses of the individual isotopes. The percent A1's and percent A2's represented the percent abundances of your individual isotopes. All of this data is available on the stable isotope data table and then we can see that we can repeat this term for each individual isotope. So this was isotope number one, isotope number three, isotope number four, um, four over and over and over again until eventually you get to whatever that last isotope is. All of this ends up getting divided by the number 100 and as a result we end up with our average atomic weight. We're going to use this equation again, uh, but we're going to have to modify it a little bit to do the type of calculation we're trying to do now. So let's tar start by talking about some of the mathematics involved in this process. First thing you should note is that we're going to limit which elements we can work with, and we're only going to be dealing with elements that have two isotopes with them. Anything more than two isotopes in the mathematics gets a little bit more complicated than we have time to tackle in here. Because we're dealing with two isotopes, we're going to need two. We're going to have two variables in our equation, and each variable is going to represent each of the individual percent isotopes that we're interested in. And because we're dealing with two variables, we're going to be solving for a system of equations. Two variables, recall from your algebra classes, requires you're going to need two equations to solve for that. So the question is, is what are those two equations actually going to be? Well, the first one is pretty obvious. We're going to be dealing with our average atomic weight equation, like we said from before. But since we're only going to ever have two isotopes here, we only need to include two terms. So it's the mass and the percent abundance of the first isotope and the mass and the percent abundance of the second isotope. But as we mentioned before, to solve for these two percent abundances, these are the guys we're interested in, we're going to need to have two equations. And that second equation is something you might have already figured out on your own. And that's the fact that our percent abundances are going to add up to a total of 100. Recall that they are percents, and percents, all of them, always add up to a total of 100. Now when we actually go to solve these, uh, we're going to replace these percent A's and um, with uh, variables, and we're going to use the variables X and Y in each case. X and Y, just so it's something a little more familiar that you got for you guys to work with. So I think at this stage in the game, we're ready to tackle our uh, first example. Uh, here's how it's going to be worded. Your job is to calculate the percent abundances of the two known isotopes of the element chlorine shown below. Now these names themselves provide you with some of the information you need. We have the isotope chlorine 35 and we have the isotope chlorine 37. And these 35s and these 37s are going to be the masses of our two isotopes. So these are what we're going to plug in for our M1 and this is what we're going to plug in for our M2. We're also told that the average atomic mass is 35.453 atomic mass units. This information is actually straight from our periodic table, and we see right here we have that 35.453 atomic mass units. If this average is not given to you, you should definitely know that you should be able to find the same exact information right off of your periodic table. We're going to plug this stuff into our equation, and it's going to allow us then to solve for the missing information, which is going to be our percent A1 and percent A2. Let's get started with the process and start plugging in some of our numbers. Uh, it's always mass times percent abundance. The mass of our third, first isotope was 35 and its percent abundance we're going to label as the variable X. Our second isotope had a mass of 37 and we're going to label with its percent abundance as the variable Y. 
This will all be divided by the number 100 as per our equation, and it's going to be equal to the average, which is 35.453. Now we have our equation here. It's got our two variables in it, but as we mentioned before, two variables means we need two equations. And that second equation is always going to be the same thing. It's going to be x plus y is equal to 100. Remember, x and y are percentages, and percentages always add up to the total of 100. Now, if you think back to your algebra classes, there's a lot of ways to solve a system of equations like this. I think in this scenario, uh, your best bet is to use what's known as a substitution method. Solve one of the equations for a variable, and then substitute that variable back into the original equation. Uh, and I think the easiest one to solve for is going to be this guy right here. So we're going to solve this, and we're going to say that y is equal to 100 minus x. I simply subtracted x from both sides to get y by itself. And I can now take this information right here, and I can use it to replace this y up here. And if we plug all that stuff in, we're going to get a new equation that looks like this. 35x plus 37 times 100 minus x all over 100 is going to be equal to 35.453. And what I've accomplished here is I've now gotten one equation and I've got one unknown. At this stage in the game it's really just a little algebraic uh, manipulation in order to isolate the variable x and see what it's actually solved for. So let's do that real quick. Uh, we'll distribute this 37 into everything in the parentheses and at the same time we'll also take this 100 and move it over to the other side by multiplying both sides of the equation by 100. We end up getting 35x plus 3700, 37 times 100, minus 37x, and that is going to be equal to 3545.3. Again, we multiplied both sides by 100, which caused our decimal place to move over two places. Now it's time to combine some like terms. 35x minus 37x is going to give us negative 2x. And then 3545.3, if we're going to subtract 3700 from both sides, that's going to make this equal to negative 154.7. Last step then, we're going to divide both sides by negative 2. That's going to cause this turn to cancel out. We'll end up with x over here. And x is going to be equal to 77.35%. And that is one of our answers that we're looking for. And this is telling us that the chlorine 35 isotope is 77.35% abundant. If remember, recall from before, 35 was the variable that was associated with x. Well, that's one of our answers, but we need both of our answers. And to get the second one, we're going to go back to this equation over here. And we're going to say that y, then, has to be equal to 100 minus 77.35. And we'll find out that y is equal to 22.65%. And again, this is the percent abundance of our second isotope. This is the chlorine 37 isotope up here. So it tells us that 22.65% of all chlorine atoms have a mass of 37, and 77.35% of all chlorine isotopes have a mass of 35. Now just like before, we can check this work by going back to our, our um, stable isotopes table. If you zoom in on that stable isotopes table, we can find right here, here's the element chlorine. We talked about the two isotopes being chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. And here are the 2% abundances that go along with this. And hypothetically speaking, these two guys should be relatively close to the answers we had. We ended up with an answer of 77.4% for this isotope, relatively close to the percent abundance here. And we ended up with an answer of 22.7%, again, relatively close to the percent abundance here. We talked about in the last video why these numbers are a little bit off. It has to do with rounding here and it has to do with the masses that we're actually plugging into our equation. Just like before, if you're looking for practice problems, you can pick any element from the list over here that has two isotopes associated with it. You can get the actual numbers of their masses, plug everything in, solve it like we did before, and then compare your answers back to 
the answers that show up on the table itself. And in most cases, you should get results that are relatively close.